Hello and welcome to another video. Today what I'm going to do is run through actually a section B rather than a section A as I know this has been a popularly requested section uh, for the channel uh, and questions uh, and answer to questions in that section which are worth more marks. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to run through a section uh, B for a paper which I've already done the section A from so more recently I've done this 2021 a macro paper and I've done the section A and that's in a different video you can see all the answers as I scroll through here but we are going to look at section B uh, where you're given one hour for the section and I'm not going to do a whole hour worth of answers to this question uh, to these questions but I'm going to run through uh, quite a few uh, well, A and B for these two questions, uh, which I hope will be useful. So that's the five mark question and the eight mark question. Um, and it won't take a particularly long amount of time, but I'm going to run through the various things that they're looking for, some useful tips, um, which you can use as I have done examining for this exam board before and done on this paper, which will ensure that where possible, you're maxing out the marks that you get for your paper two uh, for the macro paper and then any other paper which uh, you run through as well, which will have the same exact exam structure. So here's the question six, and there are uh, a whole bunch of different questions, but we're going to focus on the five and the eight mark question. So you've got trade and aid in Rwanda, and it's aid funding received by Rwanda per capita, so per person. Um, and you can see that I've highlighted the information there, so $123 per person in 2011. You can see the population and I've just drawn another arrow to show the general trend that the population is increasing and it goes to around 12.3 million in 2018. You can see the Rwanda real GDP annual percentage growth rate. You see one thing to mention is a key thing is that it's always positive. So the growth rate, even though it slows down, is always going up. It doesn't mean that actually the GDP is going down, it means the GDP is increasing every single year, but in some years it's uh, increasing at a slower rate than it was previously. We've got some information here, extract A, and we've got some information here, extract B. Extract B I'm going to use uh, for the eight mark question, but extract A is largely relevant to the other questions. And you'll see here that you have these one, two, three, four, five questions, five, eight, 10, 12, 15 mark questions. We're gonna focus on the five and the eight mark question today. So let's get into it. Using the data in figures one and two, calculate the change in the level of total aid funding to Rwanda between 2011 and 2012. So if we're looking at the total aid, um, we've seen already that it's per capita. So if we want to find out the total aid, we need to take the per capita funding uh, and we need to multiply that by the population. And that will tell us what the total amount of aid that they are receiving is. So let's do this for 2011. If we scroll up, we can see that in 2011, the aid per person is $123, and the population for 2011 is roughly, let's say, 10.3 million people, as we can't say for sure. So 2011, we can say that it is $123 per person, and we multiply that by the amount of funding, uh, sorry, the amount of people in the country, which we said was about 10.3 million people. And if we calculate that, we get approximately, let me just put a whack it in my calculator quickly, 10.3 times 123 is around 1, apologies there, Jump the gun with my brain. One, two, six, six, point nine. And that's million. Okay. 
Now, if we find 2012, you can see that the per capita funding goes down to 83. And in 83, and the population is about 10.5 million approximately, let's say 10.55. So then we have $83 times by 10.55 million, which is approximately, if we type that into the calculator, it will get us around 875.65 million. And then we just want to calculate the change so it's not a monetary, it's not, sorry, it's not a percentage change. It's just a monetary value in terms of the change. Um, and we can do that by doing, well, 2012 minus 2011, which is 875.65 minus 1266.9, which when you put that into your calculator, you end up with negative and then dollars 390.02 million. Now, with this question, it's five marks. What they're looking for is for you to make sure that you're using all the correct working and that where possible, you are uh, making sure that you include the relevant, and I'm going to highlight them here, the relevant units. If you don't include the units, you often lose marks. So you will only get four out of five as opposed to five out of five. It's a really easy way to lose marks. Just make sure that you're consistent and then you will make sure that you are getting maximum marks possible where you can. Okay, so now we move on to the eight mark question. You do not need, things you do not need. I'm going to put it next here. Definition. That's a waste of time. Don't put it in. You don't get marks in this exam board for definitions. Um, so just ignore that. Go straight into answering the question. Things you do need, application for sure, and evaluation. This is one thing that people miss often. There's two marks available for evaluation. It doesn't have to be a significant amount of writing. It can be one or two sentences, but if you ignore it, you will only get six marks um, and you would want to avoid that. So the breakdown of the marks are knowledge, two, and this is implied if you write correctly about population or economic growth or whatever it might be, you will get the knowledge marks. Application two, this is you using the extract, using extract, make sure that you do that. Analysis, explaining your reasoning, two marks, and evaluation, two marks. This is where you say, however, an issue of, in this case, the growing population is blah, 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 and that will get you additional marks. So, with reference to the information provided, examine two likely benefits for the for the Rwandan economy of the growth in the country's population. Okay, let's start off with the first benefit. One benefit of a growth in the population. Uh, I'm just going to go for is economic growth. This is pretty straightforward. And what I like to use is the peel structure for this. And what I mean by that is you have your point. That's, I've just said my point there about economic growth. My evidence, I get the extract, the evidence from the extract, my explanation or my analysis there. And then this point here is just making sure that I'm answering the question link. Am I answering the question? Usually yes, but just checking that I'm not putting down loads of theory that is irrelevant to the question. So one benefit of a growth in the population is economic growth, okay? Uh, and we can now go up to our data and find that. So we can say, for example, in 2009, the population was 9.75 million. In fact, let's find a better year to link it to this data here. So here's a good growth rate. This is 2012. Here's 2012 here where the population is approximately 10.55 million. 
as we mentioned earlier, 10.55 million. The year before was about 8% growth and the population was about 10.3 million. So we use that data to answer our question here. So between uh, 2011, 2012, the population increased, and I'm going to use an arrow there from, let me just remember, 10.3 to 10.55 million. And the growth rate in GDP increased from, let me go back up, and this is what you do in your exam, and you have to go back and forth, which is annoying, but you do it. Growth rate increased from 7.99% uh, to 8.5% approximately. So I've given my uh, point, I've given my evidence, now I need my analysis. Therefore, uh, the greater population could lead to greater consumption as a component of AD. AD being higher demand, leading to an increase in economic growth. And I could draw a diagram showing agri demand shifting out as a result of an increase in AD. There we go, that's one benefit. <clears throat> okay, a second benefit. Uh, we can link this directly to our first benefit, a, another benefit is a growth in tax revenue for the government. Okay, now I've already scanned through uh, the data here, there isn't a lot of application that you can get from this, but we should get the two application marks from the data that we've included here because we've got a significant amount of data. I would say we get one for using the population and one for the change in the growth rate. So what we can do now is go straight into analysis. So uh, the growth in tax revenue will come from direct taxes like oops like income tax and indirect taxes on consumption like VAT. And if you're seeing the Rwandan economy, what the benefit is, you could say these taxes could be used for interventionist supply side policies like education. education, um, leading to an increase in the long run growth potential of the economy. LR long run growth potential of the economy. The 
There you go, two reasons. You could also potentially come up with other reasons. Maybe um, you could talk about increase in output. Uh, well, we've talked about the economic growth. Maybe increase the size of the workforce, tax revenue, consumption, living standards uh, for the locals. I guess, actually, that wouldn't necessarily lead to the economy. But, you know, the there's a growth in the economy, basically, as a result. Maybe increase in business confidence as a result of the increase in the population, especially if they're working. Now, the last bit we need to do is some evaluation. So the evaluation is worth two marks. It doesn't have to be, as I mentioned, a significant amount, but it's a however point. However. So why might this not be the case? So what could be an issue of the growth in the population? So we can come up with maybe a couple, just so we are confident with this. So one potential weakness of the growth in the population is the uh, potential rise in demand pull inflation caused by the increase in consumption as a component of AD. C for consumption as a component of AD. So that's definitely a weakness. And then we can have another one just to make sure we've got as many as possible. Um, another weakness. And we don't need two, you just need one. And I would suggest one for the sake of your timing for the exam. But I'm just getting another one. Another weakness may be a rise in unemployment. If those workers... who join the labour force, don't get jobs. Oops. Who join the labour force, don't receive, get jobs, which increases Government expenditure on transfer payments. There we go. That's way too much, but just for clarity and for the sake of this video, I've given additional content to help you in the event that you need it. Eno enough for this question would easily be this for your evaluation. And then these two points here you would be easily getting eight out of eight. If you can fit it into one page, because I've got all these doodles here, it could fit into one page. If you're running out of time in the event of the exam, for the eight mark question, it's the last question before they move into levels. Um, so what I mean by levels is um, the 10, the 12, the 15 mark, they're not marked by a tick box exercise for the examiners. They are marked, they put you into levels based on uh, the quality of your writing and the things that they're looking for in terms of evaluation. So an eight mark question, if you're running out of time, you could just do a bullet point for each of the points that you need to do very quickly and you could still get eight out of eight. Hopefully that's been really useful. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. It's given you some understanding, helped you with a bit of theory, helped you with a bit of exam technique um, and leads to you getting better results in your exams. If you liked the video, Give a like, give a subscribe, um, put a comment in if you like it, and I will try to upload some more in the near future. I'm hoping I'm going to do some on a weekly basis, at least one on a weekly basis, to help you in the lead up to your exams. All right, thanks very much, and uh, best of luck to you, as always, in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.